Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 663. A plan for health and longevity to avoid the pain and disability of aging. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This is number 663. I can't believe I've done that many. Um, And it's about what to expect for women in their 40s and men in their early 50s when you start to age. What are the symptoms? What do you look for? And what do you do about it? Last month, or last week, we talked about the diseases of aging and how you want to catch them before they have actually developed. So preventive medical care is ideal for preventing the diseases of aging. So we talked about that last week. This week, we're talking about how do you know? Because many patients come to me on their very first visit. They filled out all the forms. For women, there's a lot of work to do beforehand. They have to get their blood drawn just like the guys do. But they also have to have a mammogram, so I know they don't have breast cancer. And they have to have an ultrasound of their pelvis if they haven't had a hysterectomy. So there's a lot of work up leading up to that, but that also gives me a lot of information so that I can then figure out a tentative treatment plan to offer them when they come in for their hour-long consultation. So what I hear from my patients as I go through every one of their symptoms and say, this is due to low testosterone, this is due to low thyroid, this is due to to no estrogen because you're menopausal. So as I tell them each symptom and why they have it, what is the cause, They're always like, I never knew that. No one ever told me what to look for and that anything was going to change except I wasn't going to have periods and I'd have hot flashes. That's a problem. I think part of that is that 20 years ago when the WHI false study came out and scared women off estrogen, then doctors in OBGYNs and also internal medicine and family practice doctors were no longer trained in giving hormones of any kind back to women. So... That leaves women out there suffering and aging without the needed hormones. The second problem is testosterone as a treatment for women has not been accepted yet by the agencies that know women make testosterone when they're young and don't when they're old. Um, So that that leaves me, you know, crying in the wilderness about all of this, saying there are thousands of studies. When they say there's not enough information that we need testosterone, they're wrong because they're not looking for it. If you don't look, if you, they used to say in medical school, if you don't take the temperature, you can't find a fever. Well, they're not looking in the research. There's tons of research that says estrogen and testosterone and fixing all of the hormones that decrease as you get older, that all of those things help you live longer and with a better quality of life. So don't believe them when they say they haven't, <coughs> haven't had enough studies. So I want you to know what to look for as you're getting older. Because I have to say, my patients are pre-screened. Usually they come in, they have to have deficient hormones. Or when they see me, they probably aren't ready to see me. They haven't, they haven't gotten to that point in their lives that they are symptomatic. If they don't have symptoms, but they have low hormones, I don't think they need to see me either. When you're symptomatic with a horm- hormonal level, that is low, and there's a big range of low, (coughs) excuse me again, then that's when we see you. Because symptoms mean that you're noticing the difference. And they also are the first sign that that your hormones are, are tanking. So first, to refresh your memory, for women, testosterone is the first hormone to drop. And that's when we start in our 40s, start getting irritable, gaining weight, we lose our energy, we lose our muscle mass. I'll go through the whole symptoms. But for us, usually that's the first hormone to drop. For you to age well in a healthy fashion, 
you have to know your symptoms. So let's look at the symptoms of loss of testosterone for both men and women. Women get it first. Usually it's the first hormone in women to drop starting when they're in their late 30s or early 40s. They lose their sex drive. It's when a lot of divorces happen because women just come home and say, oh, not having, I'm not having sex anymore. I'm done. I don't feel it. I don't have a sex drive. And husbands are in shock and deprived, and they're very, and that causes a lot of conflict. That's not the only thing, but, and teenage children are the other factor. So, this is a list of symptoms of low testosterone for both men and women. <clears throat> First thing is sex drive drops. You don't have a sex drive, you don't want to have sex, or you're just not, it's not on your to-do list, you don't care anymore. For men, it's loss of morning erections and loss of good heart erections. Your erections get shorter. Basically, they, the duration is shorter, and <clears throat> your erections are not as hard. Uh, for women, loss of orgasms. No matter what you do, you just can't get one. But in general, that's not the biggest problem. The problem is you don't want to have sex, so that ends up being a secondary problem. Fatigue is one of the big things I see as women get into their 40s. It's a double problem. We're overbooked. We're taking our kids everywhere. It's a time when we've got kids in all kinds of activities and we need time for ourselves, but we don't have any. We go to work, we go to activities, we take care of our kids, we do the wash, and we're exhausted. That's not just the, re you did that when you were in your 30s and it was okay. Now, the reason it's so hard is because either your thyroid is decreasing or your testosterone is decreasing or both. It happens quite frequently when we're in our early 40s. But we put up with it because it's kind of a nebulous kind of a complaint, fatigue. Men don't usually feel that till they're in their 60s, maybe late 50s. <clears throat> Insomnia. So I noticed that right off after my ovaries were taken out. It's like they removed my brain and they removed my sleep. And that didn't go well together. It was hard to think, and it was really impossible to sleep. Testosterone is the hormone of sleep. Why they give us all these other drugs instead of just giving us the hormone we need, I don't know. But it would uh, take, it would be a big cut in sleep drugs if we all had our testosterone after we were in our 40s or 50s. Depression and anxiety attacks, that's really frequent when we don't have when we don't have any testosterone. And in men, testosterone triggers a, T, a, a FSH and LH surge that gives them an anxiety attack. They, they've gone to the, by the time they get to me, they've been to the psychiatrist, they've been to their primary doctor, nobody can figure out what's wrong. And they get these, as soon as they're up to speak, they're, if they're executives or if they're an electrician going out to a job, all of a sudden they get an anxiety attack because when you're stressed, FSH and LH surges happen in women. We get hot and sweaty. They get anxious. So that's another sign that your testosterone is low because FSH and LH go up when your testosterone is low and when your estrogen is low if you're a woman. Um, <clears throat> loss of strength and muscle mass, that's a, you know, that's a one synapse thought between, oh, I don't have any muscle and I'm tired when I work out. That never been tired before when you, after you worked out, but now you are that you have lost the stamina, you've lost muscle mass, blood flow is not going to your muscles anymore because your testosterone is low. So that's a good sign to look for. Frailty, some people get really frail, especially women. You know, I'm, I'm talking about frail is like what you generally see in a person without any kind of hormone replacement, say a woman who is in their 70s and they're very skinny and, and they're hunched over, they've got osteoporosis and they walk really slowly and look at the ground, that's frailty. So, but I see young women with this who have had a hysterectomy during this last 20 years. They took their ovaries and then they never gave them estrogen. Now they have osteoporosis when they're in their early 50s. It's terrible. It's like being 100 when you're 50. You need to have your estrogen replaced if they took your ovaries out and you need your testosterone replaced. Those are two vital hormones that you would have had if you had them out early, if you had your hysterectomy when you were late 20s or 30s, that's not when people usually go through menopause. So it's not a normal aging process. It's accelerated. You need to have your hormones to prevent all of those things. Um, 
Testosterone also makes you, um, <clears throat> helps you think. It, uh, if you have a loss of motivation to get things done, that's a lack of testosterone usually. Loss of, of efficiency when you do work around the house or, or at the office. Um, weight gain for no apparent reason. You haven't changed anything and now you're all of a sudden gaining weight and mostly in your abdomen. Belly fat, arthritis, and osteoporosis. Oh, and sagging skin. So it was, at BioBalance, we have hormone replacement, longevity medicine. We have weight loss medicine. And then we have <clears throat> BioBalance skin, which takes care of our skin changes when we're getting older. So we try to make people look as good as they feel and feel as good as they look. So that's, that's our mission. Now, for, for the ladies, loss of estrogen <clears throat> gives you several. I'm sorry about this. I have a frog in my throat. Not very medical statement. <clears throat> so if you have a loss of estrogen, that's usually the third thing that happens. You've probably already undergone the changes of low testosterone and no progesterone, which means you're not ovulating, so you get bad PMS. After all this state, these two stages happen, then you lose your estrogen. Sometimes it all happens together. Sometimes it happens all spaced out over 10 years. Well, loss of estrogen, you have hot flashes or night sweats. You can have anxiety attacks like men do. Irritability, can't stand anything your kids do or your parent or your husband does or your spouse does. That's, that's very likely a lack of estrogen. You have a dry vagina, you have pain with intercourse, you feel like you've got sandpaper on the inside of your vagina, um, and you start urine loss. Like for no reason at all, you have urine. And so you have to wear a pad, which is always not fun. And it's not very, it's not good in terms of preventing yeast because you get a yeast infection if you're wearing a pad, a wet pad all the time. So <clears throat> we have a treatment for urine loss after somebody's got their hormones back. Um, it's called Amcella, and it's painless, and it does a great job of bringing the bladder back up, but that's another lecture. Um, <clears throat> some, most women tell me their skin is really dry without their estrogen, it's, and it's um, dry, not smooth, not, not soft like it always was. Um, the, I forgot to say, your vagina also shrinks without estrogen. Over time, a vagina that's that big will be like barely a a pencil eraser's size. So <clears throat> that's a progressive shrinking of the vagina that happens without estrogen. Women get osteoporosis without estrogen. Testosterone also helps with osteoporosis. And they get arthritis without estrogen. So all of those symptoms should say, oh, or any of them should make you think, oh, I'm, I'm going through menopause, I've gone through menopause, I need help, I need to have some things replaced, and that gives us a chance to then set you on a course of doing the right things as you age to stay healthy longer. My goal is to have no one end up in a nursing home, no one end up with their children having to take care of them if we do this, if we follow a healthy course and replace the hormones and get to an ideal weight, then we shouldn't have to have help as we get older. It's a function of living a long time, but not living in a healthy fashion and not having our hormones replaced. So let's go over one more uh, list of problems. And that is th your thyroid is, thyroid usually becomes low in women at the time they start having periods, which is menarche. It also become there's another surge after pregnancy but that can be transient and can go away. And then the last uh, increased um, frequency of having low thyroid is, is right around menopause or before. So those are the times we look for these symptoms. So these are symptoms of, the, this list is symptoms of low thyroid, but I'm gonna read it for people who are, um, are listening <clears throat> and not watching. Hair loss, thinning hair, and hair loss all over the head. Not just hair loss on the top of your head or on, on the temples, but hair loss everywhere. Uh, you see hair all over the floor. I've had this. You see hair all over the floor. It's in the drain. You're wondering if you're going to have any hair left. That has to do with low thyroid. Gaining fat. Not necessarily, not necessarily gaining weight like gaining muscle and fat. You're gaining just fat. You get fluffy. 
um, <clears throat> you have terrible fatigue, you don't want to even crawl home after work or after taking care of the kids all day. You have depression. Depression is a big sign of low thyroid. You feel cold all the time. Everybody else is comfy, but you're freezing. Your hands are cold. Everything's cold. Testosterone, oh, excuse me, thyroid makes your, it makes heat in your body. It, it directs your cells to burn calories to make heat. So of course you're going to stop losing weight because your thyroid's low. So if you're cold all the time, that's a sign that there's some problem with your thyroid. Uh, if you have very dry skin, in fact, I sat, I was at a meeting one time and it was, it was a business meeting and I sat next to a woman who had literally, it looked like tiles, tiles on, on her skin. You could see every skin cell and it was so dry and she was putting cream on it and she was putting cream on her hands and she, I mean, she clearly knew she had an issue and she was trying to moisturize it but it wouldn't moisturize because that's a sign of severe thyroid loss. And she had very thin hair and every other sign, she was swollen. These are th signs of low thyroid. And she had a big mass goiter, like a swollen thyroid right here. Um, <clears throat> other things that you can look for are constipation. People who have low thyroid, their bowels don't move very well. And they can be constipated for seven days at a time. It's not healthy. Um, if you get blood work, usually... Your um, cholesterol uh, is high if you have low thyroid. So that usually fixes a low thi or high, high cholesterol if you have your thyroid replaced. And um, you have low blood pressure and a slow pulse. So that isn't always a sign of health. Everybody goes, oh, yeah, it's so great. I have, you know, my pulse is 55. Well, are you an athlete? Have you been working on it? Are you, are you at ideal weight? If the answer is no, then it's probably your thyroid because that causes the appearance of health, which we view low, low pulse and low blood pressure as healthy, but people who stand up with low blood pressure fall down. They, they pass out. It just, it's, not, it's not necessarily good for you if you have a low blood pressure and pulse. So um, most of the time when I, have, when I see a patient that has any of these, and I see them every day, all the time, when I see a patient like that, I, I have the blood work to prove that their symptoms are based on this. So, um, so that's what I do with my patients. I go through their symptom and say, what hormone is causing each symptom? Then I take them to their lab and review the lab with them and show them that they have maybe prediabetes. That's why they're not losing weight and, and their testosterone is in the, is in the tank and they have no estrogen or their thyroid is very low. And then we start to fix everything. We replace what's missing. We, we try to um, give our patients whatever supplementation they need to be healthy. But usually by then, they're on five. They've already been given five different drugs for this when the answer was hormones. So in general, over time, many patients who haven't had this for a, for a long time, meaning five to ten years before that, if they catch this early, they don't end up getting put on all of those medicines. We don't have to then wean them off of their medicines, blood pressure medicines. Sometimes blood pressure goes up if you don't have enough estrogen and testosterone. So, and because you gain weight, your blood pressure goes up. So we have to use both our hormonal tricks and our tricks with weight loss. And we do, we do use every form of um, medication and lifestyle changes for weight loss. So, that is something that we find to be linked with treating hormones. We don't feel like we can be true doctors if we're not trying to make you healthier. We, sh we literally look at your diet and your exercise program and what you can do to be healthier. So what do I mean by changing your lifestyle? Well, what I mean is stop smoking. If you're smoking, stop smoking. You can't change the past, but you can change today. So that's the worst thing that you can do. The second worst thing is alcohol. You, you, if you drink more than 15, God forbid, drinks a week, then you've got a problem and you need to stop. And um, if it's a lot more than that, you need to slowly stop or you need medical help to get off. You can't just stop drinking alcohol if you drink a lot. But I would suggest that if you have a problem with alcohol, you not start it again. It's a toxin. It's not a food. You may think it is, but it stops your um, 
breaking down fats in your body and getting them out of your body through your liver. It just stops doing that to just get the toxin of the alcohol out. So if you want to be healthy, then you need to stop drinking or add back, get back to less than seven drinks a week. Actually, if you feel really good, honestly, I don't think that you're going to need to drink to feel better or to relax. You can naturally relax like when you were younger, hopefully. Everybody has to exercise almost every day, 30 to 60 minutes a day, and that's 30 to 60 minutes at one time. That doesn't mean, oh, two minutes you ran up the stairs, two minutes and you add all the minutes together. That doesn't count. You have to spend 30 to 60 minutes daily, at the very least, three times a week. And some people who have are O blood types have to work out every day or they're they're not happy, their brain doesn't work, their body is connected to their brain, and they have to work out every day. So if you're an O, that's, that's your plan. Go home and throw out every cereal, throw out every packaged junk, except maybe some whole grain crackers. Throw everything that's processed that you can find in your house. You don't need or you can donate. Um, people who aren't your age, who are young, can eat that stuff or put them in a different cabinet where your kids can eat, but you can't. You just say, I'm not going to go in that cabinet. No cookies, no candy, no cake. It's really about grains. It's really about rice and oats. And oats are the best grain but for you but because they are slower to metabolize. But it's also about wheat. It's about um, corn. And I mean cor corn as a cornmeal, not corn as fresh corn. All of these carbs are really bad for you and are really, they. if you need to gain weight, that's what you eat. If you don't want to gain weight, you shouldn't eat it. So uh, we tell, we go through a patient's diet and, and try to get them on a healthy diet. Um, eat fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. You're going to have to go to the store more, but you can eat all the cheese and yogurt and uh, fresh or frozen meat, fish, chicken, uh, turkey, and make meals at home. Make them out of real food, not out of a box. Uh, if you're choosing a bread, for all of those who are gluten sensitive, you can eat sourdough bread. It doesn't have any gluten. It's amazing. So uh, not a lot of it if you're trying to lose weight, but or if you're pre-diabetic, but you can still have bread. So that's, that's kind of a, a new finding for me. Probably everybody knows that already. Um, and then there's a couple psychological things. You should do something you love every day, whether it's walk your dog or read a book or read poetry or talk to your husband or wife or go to dinner or make dinner. Something that you love to do, you should do it every day. You have to do one thing for yourself. And then look for opportunities to have fun because as we get older, we stop having fun. We just continue to work or we just sit and stare into space. That shouldn't be your life. Your life should be, you should be healthy so you can have fun, so you can go out and do the things you want to do at any age. I want you to be able to hike. I want you to be able to play golf. I want you to be able to go shopping at the mall all day. I don't want you to have to be in a wheelchair. That's, that is what happens when we don't have any hormones and when we don't take care of ourselves. So if you choose to be healthy, there are people, or there are doctors and places that you can go to have longevity treatment to prevent diseases of aging. If you have them, have the diseases already, then you can lessen their effect on your body and on your brain. There are ways to do that. You can, if you wish, also change your lifestyle. Half of this is half of this is you. Half of this is my plan. So my knowledge, my plan, giving you the, the keys to the kingdom so that you can live a long time without assistance, where you can live independently of, of other people except maybe your spouse. You have to have other people, but I mean, you don't need people to take care of you. I don't want you to have that. I want you to be feel healthy, be able to think, not have Alzheimer's, not have dementia. It's highly connected to diabetes. Not, ha not have Parkinson's. There are, there are so many things we could help you with to keep you from having these diseases, but you have to know what the first signs are, like what we discussed, and you have to be able to find help and get help, know where to go. So you can look at my book. I have two books, one for women and one for men. One is called The Secret Female Hormone, which has all the information that I can't get into this amount of time about staying young and staying healthy. 
And you, or you could, if you're a guy or you want to read it to your husband, I've got Got Testosterone. And that's a book for men, different, it's a different writing style. It's much more for guys that they can just skim through it. Or you can read it to them like one of my patients does. When they're having their private time, she reads my book to her husband. So all of these things, we have lots of ways to take care of you for everybody who learns differently and who, who has different needs. We're trying to do individualized care. There is no one size fits all anymore. We now know that. And that's not how we practice. We practice within your individual issues. So please read, please get educated, please know when you're starting to get these symptoms and recognize them as a need to get some help. I love talking to you like this because this is why I'm in this practice. It is to keep people healthier in a way that people haven't, nobody's done before. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.